The flexibility of working from home is amazing, but trying to actually be successful in getting work done is another story. That's why I always work to create a space that inspires me to do my job and eliminates distractions. And one of the key parts of this is something that can almost go unnoticed when you're focusing, and that's lighting. Using smart lights with Apple's HomeKit, you can create any number of different scenes in your office that can help you mode shift between different roles you do, subconsciously setting your brain up for what matters next. Or you could just keep sitting in those dull overhead lights and keep staring at Twitter all day. The choice is yours. I'm Eric Wielander, welcome to my channel. I've been working remotely for my employer since 2019, and today we're going to talk about five tips for turning your home office into a smart home office with better lighting. The first step is to make your overhead lights smart. If you have any ceiling lights in your room, you'll want to get them on a smart switch or use smart bulbs. Ideally, this setup can be dimmable to get the most options for different scenes, but it's not necessary. I use a Lutron Cassetta dimmer switch for controlling my Philips BR40 65 watt equivalent daylight bulbs. That reminds me, if you can, I recommend getting a cooler or daylight color temperature with your light bulbs. There's probably some science around this, but it just feels more like work to me and it's easier to stay awake and focused. A Lutron Cassetta dimmer switch retails for about $60 here in the US, and if this is your first switch from them, you can get a starter pack with the required Lutron bridge for $99. The next step is to get a desk light. Now, I used to think that desk lights were just so extra. I mean, why would you need to have extra light on your work when you're staring at a lit up screen all day? Well, BenQ recently sent me their screen bar halo with no strings attached, so I could tell you guys about it here. It sits on top of my screen so it doesn't take up extra room on my desk, but it also puts it in the perfect location to shine light over my keyboard and the rest of my work area. And I know it sounds silly, but I also find it the way it's positioned in front of my screen just makes it easier to look at my content. One of the unique features of the Halo compared to other screen bars from BenQ is that it includes a bias light on the back of the monitor stand to supposed to light up the viewing area around your screen to add some complimentary light. But this backlight is a little on the dim side to do that in my experience. Now, I know a lot of people love bias lighting out there, but after trying the Philips Hue Play Bars and now this system with the screen bar, I don't feel like bias lighting behind the monitor is really helping me that much when compared to the light over the top of the monitor. The screen bar halo also comes with a wireless control. Once I got mine set how I like though, I just control it with Apple HomeKit using a smart plug. The screen bar halo retails for $180. They also have a cheaper version with a wired control and no bias light called the Screen Bar Plus for $140. I think the real benefit you're getting with either of these high priced desk lights is just a better piece that holds the light to the back of your monitor. I'm able to precisely adjust mine to be exactly how I like. And they also ship an adapter for curved monitors if that's your thing. But regardless of whether the BenQ is the right option for you, look into getting a desk light that you can make smart with a smart plug or smart bulb. There are even some dedicated HomeKit desk lamps like the Maris Smart Wi-Fi Table Lamp. I haven't tried this yet myself, but it looks really compelling for less than $50. Next on the list is to put an LED light strip behind your desk. I did a whole video on the different LED light strip options you can get for less than $50, but the short answer is that my pick is still the Nanoleaf Essentials light strip. This costs $49 here in the US and it will give you a huge range of colors and brightness. And did I mention it supports thread? Adding a light strip behind your desk adds a nice glow that I think inspires my work and beyond that, it just looks cool. You can also get nerdy with it and change the colors depending on the work you're doing. For example, if I'm doing my YouTube work, my light strip is purple, but if I'm doing work for my job, it's a daylight color with HomeKit's adaptive lighting feature. The next important area is video conference lighting. Even the best webcams are still garbage compared to your phone camera for working well 
in low light. Adding an extra light on your face will make all the difference in looking good during those inevitable video meetings. You probably spend money on clothes to look good at work when you go in person. So take some of the money you're saving on pants while being at home and get a nice light. For this, I'm currently using the Logitech Lytra Glow. It works well if you already have another Logitech G device to control it like my Logitech G502 mouse. I programmed it where if I press the center back G9 button on my mouse, it turns my light on and off. This integration is slick, but it's missing out on the power of being tied to something like Apple HomeKit. If you're looking for something that works better with HomeKit, get any number of cheap LED panels online and control it with a smart plug. This way you can turn it on and off with other lighting in your room. And if you want a good light that's a little upgraded in this category, check out the Viltrox L116T. I use two of these for my unboxing setup for my YouTube channel, and they are a pretty solid color quality for about $50 when you get them with a power adapter. Now, if you need a signal to others that you're on a call, consider changing the color of another smart bulb somewhere else in the house when your video light is on. I've thought about doing something like this myself, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. From there, you can think about getting accent lighting like these Nanoleaf lines or shapes that I have on my wall. When people see them in work video chats, they're always a nice conversation starter. The last tip is to take advantage of the smarts in all of these lights with automation. Be willing to experiment with different ideas that will work for you in Apple's home app. This will be annoying at first, but I think it'll pay dividends as time goes on. Here are some that I've used over time that I find really useful. The first is to start with three main scenes for your office lighting, work time, dark work, and office off. Dark work or play time is a useful scene to make your office look different when you aren't doing work for your main job. That way, playing games, paying bills, or updating the family finances don't feel like you're back at the office. I also got an Eve door and window sensor to put on the door of my office. When I open the door in the morning on a weekday, it turns the lights on to my work time scene. And that's just one less thing I have to worry about when I go to work. The last automation that's great to do with HomeKit is to trigger your office off scene when you leave home, provided you're the only one who uses your space. You could always tweak the automation to focus on the lights around your desk if it's in some kind of shared space. There's no sense in leaving all your cool lights on if you aren't there to enjoy them. Oh, and did I mention that just like all of those big fancy offices downtown, I have a cleaning crew that comes in and vacuums my office every night at 1 a.m. During the day, I work for a completely remote company called Martian Craft, building mobile apps for clients. One of my coworkers, Richard, recently talked about his work from home setup and process on the company blog. It includes some great tips about structure beyond smart lighting, and I'll link it in the description below if it sounds interesting to you. Now, if you wanna hear more about my Nanoleaf lines with a little background on how I got to this desk setup here, there should be a video linked here somewhere on the screen about that. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. I don't want this to be our last time together. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.